Oh, hello, 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 YouTube, cheers. Hey, hello, internet, hello, beautiful people of the world. What's up? What is up? A couple uh, mishaps, a couple of tries, a couple one, two, threes, the rope-a-dope, doing what we do. That's right, you know, it's it's time uh, time for, that was me dropping my phone. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, YouTube bandwidth issues, Instagram's having bandwidth issues, everyone's having bandwidth issues, um, server issues. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. What's going on, everybody? Cheers, yo! Hey, you guys excited about this? You guys gonna get hyped for this third try, third time for the stream, third time, third stream of the day? Maybe the first two crashed. They don't really count, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you heard me banging my phone on the desk. Third time's a charm. Here we go. Let's talk about all the good stuff. Chopping through the fud, staying ahead of the FOMO, doing what we do, doing it best, doing it best. That's right. Yesterday, people were like, oh, man, I don't know about this no guarantee post. In fact, I had some people yesterday message me there after that, and they were like, yo, dude, um, should I sell? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I just can't. You just can't win. You just can't win. There's no winning. There's there's no winning. There's only winning. There's only winning. And really... Obviously not saying sell. You guys know I'm not saying sell. That means that would be crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Uh, but the, interestingly enough, this article, the Bitcoin bull did say sell. He was saying sell, but he's talking about Bitcoin. Um, so the conversation is really kind of convoluted, you know, and I think I think that's why it's so important for us to make sure we, we actually are just having a conversation, saying what we mean. What's the point of language if we don't say what we mean if we don't say what we mean what's the point of language so xrp finding support xrp looking good the title of the stream was xrp zero doubt um weaning sounds like weaning xrp no doubt end of year was the uh, was the name of the video we changed it to no doubt end of year 58 cents to 50 to 500 that's right that's right we're riding the 500 dollars wave we put it up. We put that together on the stream here just for you guys. 58 cents to $500 seems possible. It's a big window. It's a big spread. You know, it's a big spread. A lot of people kind of wondering uh, where will it fall in between there. I saw someone yesterday talking about some prices for XRP, and we just have to recognize that as much as we want to talk about price, as much as we want to think about price, as much as we want to look at the price, we still have yet to see anyone actually use them for their commercial solutions, for the enterprise solutions that we expect them for. That's cool. That's cool. Welcome to XRP, to the NPR XRP, the morning show, XRP radio, XRP radio. So the fact that we thought Bitcoin had found a floor at 6,200 earlier this year, it stayed there for four months before it dropped off, before it went down the rest of the way. Uh, this guy, the Bitcoin bull, was talking about how there's, uh, you know, how he sold because he didn't want to hodl, and his some of his friends hodled because they didn't want to sell. Um, this is interesting right here, Kenneth. Rogoff, a professor of economics and uh, public policy at Harvard and the former IMF chief chief economist. That's pretty big right there. Um, the IMF chief economist um, wrote something about this saying, we shouldn't be surprised by this year's cryptocurrency price bust. The price of these coins is not necessarily, it's not necessarily zero. Um, and I was like, well, that's actually a really good point. That's a really good point. Um, someone just said, check my tip bot. Philly the Kid, thank you so much, man. Dude, thank you so much, Philly. Dude, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That means a lot. Uh, if you guys didn't realize that the QR code right there is a cool way for you to be able to, we can tip each other with the QR code. Um, so I've been telling people and I've been going out and talking to people in real life if they, if they print that out, if they're working, you know, if they're a coffee shop and they're working somewhere, if they're, um, you know, uh, if they're a vendor or something and, and they're somewhere, um, you know, reality, the, you know, the reality is, is that it's anybody can log in and create a, an account and they can quit print their own personalized QR, just like the one that's above my head right now. And that the, per the personalized QR, um, the personalized QR is your address that someone can send you XRP to. So that's kind of cool. Someone the other day said they, they, uh, they were impressed by that. When I was talking to them, I was talking to someone downtown. I was like, yeah, man, you can get this QR 
it's all yours people can tip you they were like um really really tell me more i tipped someone i gave someone some xrp the other day when i was out dining just as a tip i was like here have some xrp it means it means you're in the club welcome to the club Hey, what's up, Crypto SB? What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming back. Uh, we had a couple crashes. There was a minute there where it was just busting up, breaking apart. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Third time's a charm. That's right. Time for the bull run, the bull signal. What's up, everybody? Philly the Kid, thank you so much. Brian Johnson, thank you so much. Brian Johnson said, great Instagram page. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's where I put more of my like body movement focus posts. Uh, that's that's pretty much all it is over there. But go check it out. Go follow me on Instagram. Go say what's up. I put a post up today that was like, how long can you hold? And it was a picture of me doing a handstand, but it's a moving picture where I basically made like a video kind of loop behind me. So it looks like there's motion, but there's I'm just standing there uh, on my hands. I was going to do a video. I wanted to do something that was a little bit more in depth with that. Uh, make it look a little, make it look a little more uh, popping, but I took, I took, I normally don't do that. Normally I don't post edit that much, but I just tried to make a moving photo and that one was just rough, but it didn't work out how I wanted. So I had to scrap the, I had to scrap the one that I was working on and just make a, a, sh a simpler version. And then it made me realize like that was pretty much the title of my Instagram post is like the title of today too. Like how long can you hold all? And we made the video yesterday talking about there's no guarantees just because I want to be honest with you guys. I want to say like there's risks. That's what we're here. There's a, uh, there's risks in uh in in everything there's no guarantees in anything there's no guarantees in life there's no guarantees tomorrow um so that was what yesterday's video was about but you guys said please today do the guarantee video the guarantee video i was like well since we know there's no guarantees what can we guarantee we can guarantee that i have zero doubt that's what i can guarantee i can guarantee zero doubt that's about all i can guarantee for myself is that i have zero doubt that xrp is a better uh, version of blockchain than Bitcoin. It's a better version of blockchain than um, you know, most any of the other coins I've discussed or come across or looked at. But does that necessarily mean, you know, does that necessarily mean anything other than that's my opinion? Maybe it does. Maybe it, maybe I have a really good opinion. Maybe my opinion's amazing. Maybe my opinion's the best opinion. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, what what's going on with you guys? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about all the things. There's a couple things that happened today. There's some news, so we gotta hit the news, honky news. Do you ever wonder, like, do you ever wonder what's really happening? With the, with the crypto news. What's really happening with crypto news? Where are we getting our crypto news from? That's what I always wonder. Like, where am I getting my news from? Where do I look at these sources? Like, if I'm looking at this article from... Uh, la, 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 Or let's just use this as an example. We, everyone's complaining about coin market cap all the time. They're like, coin market cap sucks. They're like, I hate coin market cap. It's the worst. <laughs> and then so we decided to go use live coin watch. But... Do we really trust them? Are we really trusting Live Coin Watch? I mean, I like to look at it for a quick reference and a quick glance through uh, to see where the prices are. Everything in 24 hours looks pretty green inside the top 13. You have Cardano's at three cents, Tron's at a penny, Litecoin 25 bucks, Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash still fighting around that hundred dollars. EOS is in between them at two. Stellar's 11 still. Ethereum's 96 under, right under 100 bucks, and XRP's at 30 cents. So we can see inside the top five, we got some red inside the hour. But if I was going to say anything about the price, if I was going to like actually be looking at prices, I would be in the exchange, right? Because that's where I'm actually buying or selling. So where's the trust? Where do we get our news from? Like if I was going to go look at an article from Forbes about the success of the ledger, why wouldn't I just go look at the XRP charts and look at the volume and the success of the ledger here in real time with 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 a, a reputable source of information. That's a good question. It's a good. It's a good, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question there. What do you guys think about me just playing games the rest of the today? I've just like I've got a bunch of stuff to do and I probably shouldn't. But what if I just live streamed games for like three hours the rest of today? You guys think that sounds like a good plan? I'm thinking about doing this fishing simulator. <laughs> I'm gonna fish. 
yeah, you guys, you guys see uh, Kung Fu lost it. Kung Fu snapped. He just started streaming fishing games. <laughs> Three hour fishing stream, fishing simulator, fishing planet. You guys want to multiplay this? You guys want to join me? You guys want to throw down? What up? What up? KFN opinion, one of a kind. Thank you so much, Dirty Sprocket. I appreciate it. I'm feeling a little bit down with XRP. You know, I think that I'm just kind of like riding the opposite or I'm like really trying to like honor and and uh, pay tribute to those of you that are like kind of feeling these different pulls. Yesterday, we were really feeling the um, no guarantee pull. Like I was just feeling like there's a lot of people that are maybe feeling like because we're not able to talk about the challenges. You know, like if you, if we were talking yesterday about the, the coin, about the two sides of one, the two different sides of one coin. And I think if, if you, if any, if you can't recognize that there's gonna be a shadow side to everything, like every person has flaws, every, token has flaws every um archetype has what what is what is you know their their front side and their backside and you know sometimes i think we all pretend like we don't have a backside or maybe you meet someone new and you think like oh they're perfect and then and they're they have no backside there's no darkness in them and then you realize like ah oh, shit they got some darkness oh shit they got a shadow and uh you know you never want to you never need to like worry too much about other people's shadows, but you definitely have to recognize that you have a shadow. I mean, that'd be silly to, to imagine that you don't. You can always turn towards the light and the shadow can be behind you, but you have to recognize it's there. So thinking about the two sides of one coin, thinking about the, you know, like I, I have to be able to say those things. I have to be able to look at the shadow and say, and say, this is real and we have to take notice of it or else it's going to sweep us up or else it's going to over i think it's going to take too much if we don't recognize it i think it's pretending it's not there is challenging it's kind of like mark twain's quote that's like um you know i don't i never lie because then i never need to remember anything i love that quote i think it's really powerful to re remember like you never lie then you don't need to remember all these lies that you get caught up in so the best way to do that is just to be honest to be transparent and i think that's one of the things that I've, I've been feeling a lot about my life and i've been feeling a lot about just these systems as well you know like they they're really beautiful and efficient these new ledgers and this technology because they bring that level of transparency and that level of being able to adequately look at both sides i think and there's a uh, there's degrees of you know there's degrees of recognizing your shadow side and taking taking uh taking notice but not giving it too much of your time and attention right so we know that there's some challenges here we know that there's some some things that are issues maybe um but we we discussed a lot of those yesterday we discussed a lot of those yesterday so we're thinking you know it's not guaranteed and that's okay we can talk about why it's not guaranteed and we can talk about why we put probability into success so probability and success crypto sb says i will join you anytime for a game stream dude let's do it bro let's just call our bosses and say sorry we've got game streams to do today <laughs> i'm gonna go fishing <laughs> i'm gonna go fishing with kung fu nerd yeah tweet at me um tweet at me if you guys have a game you really like tweet a game at me um tweet a game at me not again not again hey um so there was a few things that were really kind of popping off today that i thought was interesting to look at one of the big ones was the swift ceo stepping down people were obviously really excited about that because we know swift is a, one of the competitors for xrp one of the one of the bigger uh, market shares of what is really looking at uh, remittance services right now the one this is one of the disruptors for legacy banking that we're looking to replace not us but you know ripple net is looking to replace or compete with this remittance service and you if you ever look at the history of swift it took swift years to be able to actually acquire some of the uh, banks as customers because the banks are so reluctant to do anything new their banks are so reluctant to do anything new it took swift like a decade of showing and being in the space before banks joined and before banks took it seriously before banks jumped on swift it took them a long time uh, banks are reluctant for to new technology they're just reluctant to adopt it and so we that was a long time frame for them that was a big time frame for them to be able to get there and uh, get that 
those partners to get those those customers the banks um, to use their service and so we can see that usually when you see a ceo let go or when you see a ceo step down whether he was fired or whether he was uh you know let what well, he decided to leave on his own usually that's an indicator like if you look at successful companies like uh entrepreneurial companies that do really well their their success usually is is pinned on the people running it right the people at the top being really 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 focused on their agenda their goals their ethos the the putting out you know putting their best foot forward every day we said that yesterday a lot we said yesterday a lot like nobody got nobody's successful <clears throat> just by surprise you know people aren't going to be like wow i'm sure surprised that i was so successful in my life no they're probably successful because they they know they grinded they know they got up early they know they stayed up late they know they put the extra mile in they know they took the one less vacation maybe and they bought one less new car or maybe they didn't buy any new cars maybe they drove that junker as long as they could because they knew that that's that whole like game that whole keeping up with the joneses the whole like um you know the image the facade is not really what's going to help at the end of the day for you to become successful so the big the big thing here is an indicator that they're looking like this is a this is swift showing weakness this is swift showing their failure showing their declining um dominance declining dominance is what i would say so looking at the ceo of, of swift stepping down in june i think they said um so june next june looking at him stepping down we know that this is probably one of the bigger things that'll be talked about today but again it's not that breaking uh, it's not that big it's really you know we already knew if we had confidence that this is where we were headed six months ago, then we might not even be interested in looking at Swift or Coinbase right now. And there's degrees of like, yeah, we don't need Swift, we don't need Coinbase, but then, oh, we wanna, we wanna race to tell everyone about it whenever it happens or whenever um, something's popping off about that. And that's fine, that's what it is. Uh, looking at candlesticks inside of Binance, um, one of my favorite ways to look at candlesticks. We're at the five minute window right now, which is really there's no reason to be in the five minute window unless you're just kind of curious. We're uh, inside the four minute window, four hour window. You can see this 37 to 28, and then breaking away from the bottom Bollinger band right here, headed back towards, uh, you know, breaking right above the middle Bollinger band, and then coming back down into the bear market and finding some a little bit of bullish activity right in this last little stretch right here you guys maybe can't see that i'm not zoomed up but looking at the basically this um but zoomed out so there you go you can see if we were to look at the xrp chart volume you know there's not a lot of chart volume if we're gonna go look at i've been trying to leave this living ledger open yesterday i left it open for six hours it was awesome after six hours of watching this thing grow, the network is huge. The network is so, so huge. I'm gonna put it on auto rate, rotate and pull it back. And I was looking at, I was looking at this was I was looking for the dev null site. I have another guy that I really like that basically is like a dev, um, uh, la, 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 like a, it's like a site that just pulls from the API. Just to look at the data and we we're looking at like the transactions on there on the dev null site we we're looking at the a wallets open so we're gonna look at that next in a second but last night i left this open as long as i could and because it just keeps running and i think it got to like eight hours before it before it reset um and that's you know honestly looking at eight hours on this thing was kind of crazy looking at eight hours on this thing's kind of crazy uh how about that how about that how about that how about that I'm trying to change the volume. I don't think it's changing it at all. I think it's just set to wherever. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, the mic is peaking a little bit. You guys just told me that. Let's see if I can maybe pull it down just a little bit. How about that? There we go. That's better. A little bit less peak. Uh, we're not in the red now. There we go. So looking at average four transactions a second being processed, and we're looking at the ledger here. Uh, it was spinning. Uh, I turned that off. It was a little bit too much, I think. Um, when I left it, when I left this on for like six hours, it got huge. It looked like there was it like zoomed out, and there was like networks over here, you know, connecting, and there's like some, you know, 
um, threads over here. So this is a good visual representation of the Ripple protocol at, in, in functioning in real time. That's pretty cool. Uh, something else that was talked about today was the rumor that Samsung is going to put a wallet app into their phone that offers um, a wallet app that offers uh, a wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet. And also someone was speculating when I found originally when I found the post, the rumor was trending with the idea that there would be an exchange built in. What's up, Corey Ziegelman? Corey Ziegelman, what's up? Crypto SB, you're right. It's like eye candy. They just leave it running. Just watch it. How do we see that ledger live? It's easy. You just go to alivingledger.com. Um, I was actually, I found this actually searching for some other site the other day. I was searching for another site. I, I have the dev null one, which we can go look at dev null really quick. It's not as flashy, but it has a lot of good data. Uh, dev null.network is this other one. And I think that there's some obvious, like, you know, uh, graphic uh, improvements that could be done, but they at least have this, the open, the API set up to where you can go look at this live network explorer and you can look at transactions and uh, the ledger. I think that's kind of cool. So we were looking at this the other day and I was searching for something else like, kind of similar to this. I was searching for, um, you know, anything else that kind of like was like this. They have some things on here that are kind of cool, like this transaction waterfall that they put together. It's not in English. It's not in English at all. So I saw something that was interesting in one of these articles that I was looking at. It was the idea, um, well, we looked at this in the first video before it crashed, why Bitcoiners are using memes to cope with a crash. Of course they're using memes. Of course they are. This is what this is where we are now. Memes are life. You know, memes are life. And that's why we have the subreddit up where you guys can make memes. I promise we'll do a meme review soon. Um, we'll put it together. We'll get it. We'll get it out there. My bros. Don't worry, my bros. Put some memes up um, and we'll review them in the next episode of RMR. <laughs> Cheers. Piao. Plu. Zowie. Plow. Plow. So, of course, people are using memes. Memes are an intelligent way to deliver information, and they're bundled up in the idea of um, they're bundled up in the idea of uh, comedy, usually like some humor. So, um, you know, memes are good. Memes are gold. Memes are gold. They have some good ones on here. There's this one uh, Gandalf talking about investing in Bitcoin. I saw another one that I thought was better the other day, where. They're talking about investing in Bitcoin, and he's like, cool, how'd that work out for you? And Gandalf's like, I'm homeless now. <laughs> I was like, that's gold. That's gold right there. Gold. Good work. No, yes. Good memes. Good, good memes. You did it. You did it. Cheers. Cheers. So to understand why memes are uh, so popular, you really just have to recognize that that's just the way of the internet now. That's just what we do. We make memes. Um, and of course, you know, they're, they're, they're educational and they're truthful and they're, they're hurt, but they're funny. It, it's everything. It's everything at once. They go on to say, like, why are memes about people losing money so popular? Um, I, don't, I don't know if they actually have a good answer for that. But they say Bitcoin itself is arguably a meme. The first and only ad for Bitcoin um, was a crappy MS Paint meme depicting a wizard in 2013. Let's look at that. <laughs> uh, this is <laughs> join us, magic internet money, Bitcoin. That right there. There you go, guys. You wonder why people don't take us seriously. You wonder why people are like, it's a scam. No, it's not a scam. It's legit. We made a meme for it. Join us. <laughs> Magical internet money. <laughs> Magical internet money. No, no, no. Guys, we're serious though. We're not. Don't stop. Stop joking. This is not a joke. This is real. This is the best I could draw. <laughs> this is the best we could afford for our marketing department. Ah. Magic internet money. It makes sense. It's funny. I like it. Cheers. Good times.
We've spent any time on Reddit in the past four years, you've probably seen the Bitcoin wizard drawn in the familiar squiggly style of MS Paint, wearing a blue robe and, wield and wielding a staff. The Bitcoin wizard is the centerpiece of what is arguably the most celebrated and iconic Reddit of all time. Join us <laughs> with magic internet money. Well, folks, I wonder why they're not taking us more seriously. That's a good question. It's a good question. No! Why? Why? Oh, here we go. We're back. Hey, we're back. Hey, we're back. Hey, what's up? Did you guys completely make it through that crash? Hey, we did. What's up? How are you guys? Welcome back. Yeah, so I was trying to find on here the transactions on this thing. Uh, where is this? Reports? There we go. There we go. Total accounts. Uh, one, we're, oh, we're closing in on 1.5 million accounts. So we're closing in on our 1.5 million accounts. Oh, no, you can't see me anymore. Oh. 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 Yeah. Well, there we go. Uh, 28 minutes in and you guys can't see me. Cheers. That's good times. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't, you're not missing out on anything. I'm just invisible. I'm just invisible. Yeah. Yes, I am invisible. Yeah, it's true. Well, anyway, so Ledger accounts closed. It looks like it's been, we got over 43 million ledgers closed. We have over 1.4 million accounts on the ledger. That's cool. No big deal. And the, I, maybe you don't even need to see me. I think the stream's actually more popular now. I think more people are joining now that you can't see me. They're like, oh, thank God. Press the like button. Smash the like button, guys. Thanks so much. It means a lot. Living Ledger will lag you out. Living Ledger, stop it. Well, that was a good time. Great oldies. This is a good this is a good stream. This is a good stream. Thank you guys so much for joining the four streams today. The crash, crash, and then almost make it, then crash stream. We did it. We did a great job. The only thing that was really kind of exciting to look at, there was something that I wanted to talk about with the um, the Kenneth Ro Rogoff professor at, at Harvard talking about the not surprised that it's down, but the price is not zero. That was interesting to look at. And also, the there's a little highlight here where they're talking about how low could it go. Um, talking about $6,000 Bitcoin. Everyone's expecting that to be the bottom. How much lower can it go? Again, most people are still looking at Bitcoin. People are still highlighting Bitcoin as the main cryptocurrency they're focused on because it does hold market dominance. And we, again, have been talking about XRP for so long. Yesterday's video where there was no guarantee um, was, you know, the possibility that today uh, we made a video that's pretty much like zero doubt going slam ham foo crazy um, talking about XRP doing really good. And there's still a possibility of no guarantees, but yesterday we did, we talked a lot about um, looking at the, the challenges these coins face. And if you look at challenges these coins face, um, as far as XRP, you know, drop in the comments, what do you think the challenges that it's facing are right now? Because I can think of a lot of other coins that have a lot more challenges. Like I could highlight the challenges of a lot of other ecosystems. And then every time I look at XRP, I almost am confused. Like, do I, do I need to look at something else? Do I need to look further down uh, this tunnel? Because when you look at it, it looks so strong. The ecosystem looks really strong. The people around it look really strong. The you know, community is good. The use case is good. The use case is still developing and, and expanding. But that was also one of the things that we saw in uh, in one of these in one of these articles that I was just looking at the you know um, the meme one or maybe it was the Bitcoin bull one. He was talking about how there's not a lot of you know there's not a lot of utility in any of these networks, right? Uh, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen. 
There's there's a lot of potential in the technology, but there's no one really utilizing it yet. There's no one really using it for utility. So we have to recognize that that's something we're waiting on for all the coins, especially for XRP, um, you know, especially for Bitcoin to maybe clarify what they're doing, what what's happening with the you know what's happening with their scalability. Do they have a solution for that or not? Or not. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good point. Crypto SB is saying the only challenge for uh, XRP right now is the SEC. And I think that even though we don't really have a lot of clarity on that, and I'm not, I'm not a security advisor in any way. I do think that if you look at R3's app launching, that's a big sign that we can see XRP is more likely to be classified as a commodity and less likely to be classified as security. Because again, you have other people using it as uh, as it's meant to be used, not just the company that is being pinned as the one that be holding a security for it or that it would be a security of them. That's pretty exciting to think about. I'm not, again, a security advisor and I'm not really sure how that would work, but we have to wait for the clarity to come through. Banks maybe are already discussing behind closed doors. One of those things that we, I looked at the lawyer talking about the security uh, question for XRP, and he's saying that this could be something that is in the courts for years. It could be a year of, of debate in the courts before you get the clarity needed for some of the, you know, some of the banks in the United States to actually be able to feel confident using it. Will we see that happen sooner than later because they're working to, push that through or will we have to wait another year? It's a good question. That's a good question. And I think the analogy that we like to look at, the analogy we like to use is that we have a bunch of these ships being built. Like if you look at each, if you look at each one of these tokens, like Bitcoin as a separate token, XRP is a separate token, Ethereum is a separate token, Stellar is a separate token. If you look at all these and then you think about them as like each one's its own ship and the ships are just in port. And so we've been like uh, we're all walking up and down the port, looking at all these ships and thinking like, ah, this one looks pretty good. I can't wait to see what it does in the ocean. But none of them are in the ocean yet. You know, even the ones that are that are ocean tested and they're like, nah, we took it out. It looks like it'll work really well. And then it comes back and it's just chilling. This is uh, this is again where all the all the tokens are. They're all still in the port. All these are still just waiting to be launched into the open wild, into the ocean. So we're all just kind of waiting to see what that looks like when they are launched. Um, that's pretty much all I can say about that. Kirby, Kelby. Kelby says, why am I here? I would like to think that you are here to be part of a conversation about the evolving narrative of the internet of value and digital assets and what that means for individuals, small businesses, nation states, what that means for uh, people that are interested in, you know, not being left behind from this evolving narrative, this conversation of taking personal responsibility for your, for your, uh, you know, financial assets, taking personal responsibility for what you're backing, where your money's held, what, uh, what qualities does your money have? Does it, how does your money work? Is it micro efficient? cost effectively is it cost effective at microtransaction level is your money um is your money the the powering the economic machine that you want to support or is your money powering um something that you're not backing and how much do you get to choose and back where your money goes and what's happening with that that's a good question kelby that's a good question uh hopefully hopefully we're here to learn and share and inform each other and stay informed and be able to learn and be part of the conversation. That's why, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm making crypto videos on top of all my other videos. Thanks a bunch. Thanks a bunch. Cheers. Crypto is the future. No regulations for crypto. That'd be decentralized. Um, that would not be decentralized. So snowman, that's a really good point, man. Ah, thank you so much. And snowman chiming in right after, um, right after Kelby asked, this is a great question. This is a really important question. And this is one that I think we highlight often and I'm happy to kind of jump back to it and talk about it anytime. I love when people want to actually ask questions that maybe they're not the, the prettiest questions. They're not just a simple, it's not like a simple like, yo dude, it's gonna go to a million dollars. Cool, XRP moon. Like it's not- XRP moon. XRP moon. It's not that simple. Um, but that's a really good question. Crypto is if, if, especially let's put this, let's put the question. Snowman just asked crypto is the future of everything. 
no regs for crypto, that would not be decentralized. But I think I want to put it as a question. So if crypto is the future of everything, how would no regulations for crypto work? And how can we keep these systems decentralized? And this is one of the questions that kind of bumbled me for a minute. It's, it kept me stumbling for a second because I came from the whole anti-establishment camp where I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, like no, no, uh, you know, no regulation. It's going to be great. Decentralization is going to be great. And I started looking around and realizing there's there's going to be degrees of decentralization, right? These terms are very generalized. There's going to be degrees of decentralization. How decentralized is it going to be? Um, it, does it solve the trilemma? So when you look at the trilemma as, as far as scalability, security, and decentralization, how much can you give up on, how much can you let go of uh, one and still and still find the, you know, you can honor the other other two how much can they work together without compromise and so one of the things i think is important to recognize is that there's there's going to be tiers of decentralization and people might think oh well no regulations for crypto that would that that would be a, a form of centralization but we're we can't ignore the fact that right now there is a global um you know, bank security act that forces anyone at any checkpoint at the at a, at a financial checkpoint for for monetary issuance, there has to be KYC and AML. So the know your customer and the anti money money laundering laws of the BSA, the Bank Security Act, are really important for the for the global infrastructure in their mind. That's something that they want to honor. So if you look at well, how would that work if you don't have any regulation? How would that work? So there's there's going to be forms. There's going to be tiers of decentralization and there's going to be regulation the beauty of it though is that they can create regulation for the checkpoints that they are in control of but as long as the xrp ledger is still out being used and being supported by individuals like you and i we can choose to to not be part of those checkpoints now there's going to be you know gray areas up and down about how that works for everyone depending on where you are, depending on your geographical location and, and like the access to different exchanges you have. Uh, the, in reality, though, the the crypto is the future of everything. Like cryptography is the future of everything, but there's going to be regulation inside of um, the systems that want regulation. So if you're, if you're looking at the legacy banking system and you're saying, let's put no regulation in, that's not going to happen. They're going to put regulation in. They're going to keep honoring the BSA, Bank Security Act, and the KYC and the AML. That's big stuff. And if Bitcoin's not going to turn around and honor those the regulation, then they're going to get left behind, and they're not going to be able to be part of that um, that that infrastructure. And if they want to be, you know, not part of the infrastructure, then they probably won't be part of global adoption. And so at some point, you have to realize, like, yeah, these these ideas of of uh, anti-establishment kind of helped ca become a strong catalyst for the movement of Bitcoin. But if we look at the the reality of, of the future of adoption for everyone to be involved, there's going to be regulation and there's going to be degrees of decentralization and centralization. Like if you look at custodial services for crypto, that's pretty centralized. Like if you are going to trust a custodial service to hold your crypto in a, and, and take care of it for you, then that's a single point of failure. That's not really decentralized, right? Um, and so this is a very generalized term, and it can be a you can talk about it in a, openly and, and look at how it applies to each of these specific use cases. And I agree, crypto is the future. I agree, cryptography is very important. Looking at keeping our data safe and keeping transparency um, at the forefront of of access for everyone transparency for the information of some of these large corporations would be great some of the revenue streams for some of the large corporations would be great but again recognizing that each one's going to have their own uh degrees of of how decentralized they are how much they want to work with um being decentralized or how much they want to work with being uh, appeasing the regulators so that they can actually entertain a, a mass adoption conversation it's a good question, though. That's a really good question. Whoa, whoa, man. You guys got ahead of me in the comments. What's going on? Yo, 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 yo. It's all night song, to be clear. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Hey, yo, what's up, Henrik? How's it going? What is up? What is up? Regulated markets will become non-regulated markets irrelevant. The size and size difference would be huge. AI will control everything. We will no longer manage our money anymore. 
Wow. Well, that just sounds kind of bleak. That sounds like a rough future. It sounds rough. AI will manage all of our money. <laughs> no, not the not the robots. <laughs> not the robots. I mean that I mean honestly that could be that's something that we talked about in that truth revealed video was that we're getting to the point where we have so much data coming in and we don't really know how to how to make use of it that they were saying in in that video the truth revealed talking about how we might need AI as just to be able to kind of like make sense of the data and be able to make decisions based off that data. Um, so yeah, that's possible. I don't know. Good, good, uh, good questions. Good thinking. Well, we did it. We made it 42 minutes into the stream and it didn't crash or it did crash, but it kind of came back looking at the Bitcoin bull, Mike Novogratz, stark warning for crypto community. Bitcoin's down, um, plummeting since the beginning of the year. But we know again that even though I said no guarantees yesterday, I have a lot of probability in success for XRP in success for this uh, blockchain tech evolution, the refinement of blockchain tech. And again, we're looking at Bitcoin's underlying technology, which a lot of people don't even talk about is um, clunky, you know, uh, and they're looking at blockchain trying to improve clunky, outdated systems. But Bitcoin itself has become a clunky, outdated system. So um, no one really knows how this is supposed to happen or when or, or, or what the time frame is and what it looks like. But we're here. We're here doing the thing, doing the thing. Chopping through, keeping it fresh. Maybe Bakht will set the standard. Bakht. Bakht. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah, centralization first, then decentralization. It's a good comment to Snowman. I see what you're saying. I agree. There's definitely a, a point of us, you know, this transition is going to be a, a long threshold, a long threshold. But the camera's messed up. We glitched out a bunch of times. We can't really, you can't see me. I can't see you. But it really appreciate you guys. It means a lot. If you guys haven't already, you can grab, a, get into Acorns with the link. Get a Ledger Nano S 30% off till the end of the year. You can get into Robinhood and get a free $5 stock. If you get into Acorns, you get free $5. All those links are in the description. Thanks a bunch for the patrons that joined and supporting my channel. If you guys don't want to super chat, you can support my channel with the patron link. It's like a dollar a month is the minimum tier of support. It means a lot. It goes a long way to me making more videos. We have some other stuff that we're working on today, um, dropping some edits. And then we actually have a really exciting uh, ledger giveaway. And uh, we had some people you could enter yesterday. And if you guys want to enter, this is not the official entry, but if you take this video and share it um, you know, on Twitter or on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, and then screenshot and tweet it at me, that'll be an entry. Um, or if you just share it on Twitter, I can see that. It'll be an entry to win a Ledger Nano S. So we're giving away a Ledger Nano S. Um, that will, I think the official giveaway video will be up tomorrow, but you can have an early chance to enter. If you guys already entered yesterday, that's already, it's already put in there. It's already in the docket. So you guys have already earned another entry. No big deal. Thanks a bunch, everybody. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Yeah, what's Replica like? Um, I, I haven't messaged. I haven't played with it very much. I downloaded it because I saw it on there and I thought it was cool. Um, and I have not really played with it very much just because I don't want to like spend all day chatting with a with an AI when I need to do stuff. <laughs> I need to do other stuff. But thanks a bunch, everybody. I really appreciate it. You guys are great. Cheers. Be safe. Drink lots of water. Ah, uh, you are beautiful and amazing just how you are. And hopefully next time the camera will work all the way through. Farewell. Have a great day until I see you next time. Brought to you brought to you.
Não! <risos> Não!